please? Thank you. And if you're a family of a ninth grader, raise your hand, please. Oh, we have more eighth graders here. Okay, exciting. So we're going to begin. For those who don't know me, I'm Rodney Arthur. I'm the principal of Tuckoe Middle High School. And to my left, we have Mr. Treglia. Tonight's presentation is designed to give you an overview of what four years at Tuckoe High School will prepare you for. So there are a number of things that we're going to go over from what does a transcript look like? What is the college planning process? You know, what are various clubs and activities? You know, so many schools for many years focused on one particular pathway, was trying to help our scholars to achieve what we call a, a, a advanced diploma, right? Advanced regions diploma. That's not our focus. And I'm going to explain to you the difference before we get started. We want our students to be able to take, all of our students to be able to take multiple AP classes because AP courses are directly tied to college level work. And we want our students not to just do well, but to do exceptionally well once they move on to a four year university or school or college. So academic excellence is something that we're striving for. So ensuring that all of our students take AP classes, that's an expectation. So what you're going to find out is the district did launch uh, at the beginning of this year an initiative where we piloted a ninth grade AP class. Um, and we're looking to continue that for next year, some more to come. But coming back to what I was sharing with you, we did some work. And one of the things that we looked at was that when we looked at the World Economic Forum, which is a think tank, and they talk about what are skills that are needed in the workplace, skills such as you know, equity, right? Um, skills such as being able to collaborate, skills such as critical thinking, analytical skills. So one of the things that I've been working with my staff on throughout the year is how can we make sure that our curriculum really targets many of these skills? So that's our focus here, at, certainly at the middle and high school, and as well as at our elementary school, where we're trying to prepare our scholars with critical skills that are essential no matter what pathway they choose to follow. And again, if you didn't get a chance to look at the board presentation from last week, Monday, I encourage you to do so. So, as we begin, So many of you are familiar, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but as you know, there are two assistant principals that assist me in the work that we do. We have Mr. DeBellis and Mr. Uh, Calasuano, and in terms of our school counseling support at the high school, we have Mr. Treglia and Ms. Perello. Ms. Perello has another family engagement. That's why she's not here tonight. They both are supported by Mrs. Nicoletos, who is the secretary for guidance. Besides our guidance support, we also have our people personnel support which encompasses Mr. Uh, uh, Sullivan, who's our psychologist for both middle school and high school. We have Ms. Um, Pinto, who's uh, my secretary. And we have Ms. Tierney, who's new to our building, and she is the attendant secretary as well as the secretary to administration. We have Ms. Poulos, who's our nurse. And again, that makes up our pupil personnel support. Again, for those families who do not have a copy of the presentation, we have some that are coming out right now, and we'll be handing you those presentations. So at this time, I'm going to bring up Mr. Tregley, and we'll continue with the presentation. Good evening, everyone. My name is Phil Tregley. I'm one of the school counselors at Tuckahoe High School. And in partnering with my partner, Ms. Perillo, we're excited to be here tonight to share what we have to offer in our Tuckahoe High School guidance curriculum. I want to thank Mr. Arthur for being such an advocate for school counseling for all kids, for being with us step by step through the process and all the new initiatives and excitement that we have going on in the counseling department. You know, coming into a high school, it's a transition for anyone. And we're here to walk with the students step by step through the process. There's going to be some bumps in the road, but when you can have a counseling staff here with you that knows the students, that knows the families, that can, that can celebrate the good times, but also work on some of the bumps in the road. That's what it's all about. And you know, we want to teach the ninth graders how to be successful from the beginning. We want to instill strong study skills, time management skills, executive functioning skills. And when we can start these early on, we can 
be ready for success 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. So that's one of the things that we're going to focus on in our counseling department. Uh, up on the screen, we see two recent graduates of Tuckahoe High School. Why do we have this up here? This is the end result of our four-year program at the high school. These students got involved in ninth grade. They took their academics seriously. They were active in clubs and activities. They did service. They really dove in feet first. And they're good people. And that started in ninth grade. And where did they end up? This is our salutatorian, our valedictorian of last year's class. Uh, one attends Princeton, Princeton University, and one attends Fairfield University. And so we can go anywhere at Tuckahoe High School. As long as we start in ninth grade, strong academically, getting involved in clubs, interacting with others, building those lifelong skills. Here's a, here's a picture of where our students are attending colleges, and many more. Um, we have many students who attend tier one schools at Tuckahoe High School. Um, to name a few, I don't want to name too many, but to name a few, we have students who are at Tulane University, University of Southern California, Cornell University, Northeastern, MIT. We have more and more students who are traveling to the South, Midwest, and the West than ever before. And I think that trend is going to continue at Tuckahoe High School. Students talk, families talk, and they're sharing their experiences. It's been a positive experience for them. And we do have students who still stay locally, which is great. We have students who attend Fairfield University, Fordham University, Sacred Heart University. We have students who attend schools in the SUNY system, the CUNY system. Um, we have students who attend Westchester Community College, a two-year program. So we're here to counsel all students and have opportunity for all students to be successful. The role of the school counselor. This is exciting, right? It's a, it's a great job to be a counselor. You know, what's better than to talk with students and families about their future? Um, as a counselor, you know, we, we, do, we work on three things. Academic support, personal and social counseling, careers in college. Academically, we work with the ninth grade students on their transition to high school. Time management skills, executive functioning skills, study skills. We're the advocate for the student in the building. All right, sometimes that means we outreach to the teachers to see what's going on in class. Sometimes that means we talk to parents on the phone and find out what's going on at home and work with the student. Personally and socially, there's a lot going on for a teenager. It takes time to build that relationship. It takes time to build that relationship of trust. We understand that maybe in ninth grade, we're still working to that. But the students see us out in the hallway, in the classroom, in the counseling office. We encourage them to come in as much as possible to meet us. And we want to outreach to them as well. You know, we want to teach our ninth grade students how to handle adversity and how to move forward from that and be a better person or be a better person from that learning experience, right? Sometimes as a counselor, we deal with some conflict resolution and we're in the middle of that um, dealing with, you know, student to student behaviors and working on a positive solution. College and career, very exciting. Uh, we introduced the Naviance program to our ninth grade students. That's a program that has to do with the college application process. Also, we introduce a program that has to do with careers and the world of work to get the students interested in why are they taking these classes? What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? Where can they see themselves going in four years from now? It's not too early to be thinking about this. Ninth grade grades count. They're going on your transcript, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the presentation. And so that's our message as a counseling staff. We walk them through the step-by-step -step approach to our college placement process. Ninth grade is not too early. It's the right time to be talking about this with your children. And we do that and we talk about that with the students. Here's a picture of our Tuckahoe High School website. 
This is really where we have all of our information that can be accessed easily by our students and families. There's a lot of helpful information that's on the website, and we're actually trying to restructure our website so the guidance link is right up front when parents actually click on the website or students or visitors, you know, you can see the guidance webpage because the foundation of every high school is their school counseling department, all right? So um, let's keep going with the presentation. So thank you for your understanding on that. Here's our program highlights by year. Our freshman year, we had our new student orientation already, where we talked to our ninth graders about expectations, all the exciting things we have going on in the high school setting. We will have an individual student and parent meeting in our offices as counselors starting November 13th, next Monday. You should have received an email on, from Sign Up Genius. We welcome all of our students and parents to sign up for this meeting. If for some reason you haven't signed up yet, please do so tomorrow. If you haven't received the email, please contact our office, Ms. Nicoletto's, and we will resend it. It's a great introduction to what the counseling staff has to offer our ninth grade students. In that meeting, like I mentioned, we're going to introduce the Naviance program. College search how to look for colleges, how to look at the data inside the Naviance program, which we'll talk later about in the presentation, and how to use that Tuckahoe High School data most effectively. We're also going to introduce a, a program called Pathful Explore. This introduces careers and the world of work to our ninth grade students and families. There will be, in the 10th grade, it's really a year where we want our students to think about careers. Where do they see themselves down the road? Explore. Think out of the box. The 10th grade students are going to take interest inventories, ability inventories, from the Pathful Explore platform. From these inventories, it's going to come out some results on what the students answered or put into the questions. And from those results, they're going to target certain world, world of work fields that the student's interests or abilities might lead them to. What's cool about this program for the students are their short videos, three to five minute videos, where you can see the day in the life of this occupation. All right, and I think that's great for their attention span because sometimes it's a little shorter so they can see these real life videos and understand what it's like to be a doctor, a lawyer, a policeman, a marine biologist. There also will be a 10th and 11th grade parent night for all 10th grade families. And the PSAT is offered in the fall for our 10th grade students. We encourage all of our 10th grade students to take the PSAT in the fall. It is optional, but it's a great window into the standardized test for the first time. Our junior year or 11th grade year. We will have an individualized student and parent meeting in the counseling office to kick off the college process. During this meeting, we will discuss the beginning stages of how to research a college on Naviance. What does the common application look like? How to start the college essay? What school should we be visiting in the spring and summer of 11th grade? In 11th grade, our 11th grade students will be taking the PSAT in the fall. They will be signing up in the winter and spring for the SAT or ACT exam. We will help the students and families do that. We also have something called the College Cafe. In the spring of 11th grade, we welcome all 11th grade students to come to our office once a week during the lunch period. We will welcome all ninth and 10th graders to come once a week in the spring to, our, to the college cafe. It's an opportunity where the students can work one-on-one -on -one with myself or Ms. Perillo on specific questions about colleges. We will get a resume done for all 11th grade students. They can use this resume to possibly look for a job in the summer, but also to help them fill out 
the common application in 12th grade when things get a little stressful. It's always good to have that chronologically documented in the spring of 11th grade before the stress happens in the 12th grade college process. There will also be a 10th and 11th grade parent night um, to kick off and to explain in more detail the college process and application process. In 12th grade, again, we have an individual counseling meeting in the fall. We get really specific on the applications. We narrow down the basket of colleges that the students and parents are looking at from their research in the summer. We usually have the test data by then. We talk about how to apply, how to complete the common application. Right now, we have about 50% of our seniors have already applied to college, either early action or early decision. The trend is going that way. So we wanted to start this process as early as possible. We talk about scholarships in that meeting, how to apply for national scholarships, when's the right time to think about and look at local scholarships, how to find ways to afford college. Talk about financial aid process. Tuckahoe and Eastchester together host a financial aid night in November of the fall of senior year. A great way to ask questions about the FAFSA or the CSS profile. In the spring of senior year, we have the internship program. Our Tuckahoe High School seniors go out in the workforce. They do an internship in a field that they're interested in, that they maybe they want to pursue. They learn what it's like to work hand in hand with someone who could be their mentor. There's a very special uh, opportunity we have here at Tuckahoe as upon graduation, they're out in the workforce seeing if what's it like to be you know, working nine to five, or what's it like to work in an office, or what's it like to work at, in an ambulance. Um, I think this is a great opportunity for our 12th graders who are graduating. And again, we will be hosting a night similar to this, a 12th grade parent night, where we'll be explaining in the fall the steps of a college process, what we can do to support the students before we have our individual meeting. Just before we go on to the next slide, just want to share with you a little bit about graduation requirements, and Mr. Tregley is going to go through this. You know, we invited ninth grade, I'm sorry, eighth and ninth grade together. Many of the eighth graders that are sitting in here are taking high school level courses. Your performance in those courses matter because as eighth graders taking these courses, these, your grades will go on your college, your high school transcript which you'll find out a little bit more in this presentation. As ninth graders, every single course you take will be reflected on your transcript. And that's what colleges look at. Right now, more than ever, so many schools are looking at test option as opposed to looking at SATs, ACTs. There are more universities, top tier universities, that are going test options. So your grades matter more than at any other point because of the test option. We had Craig Broccoli here from Binghamton University, and we only had about 20 families here, but he shared some really great information for families to know. And again, your grades matters more now than at any other point. So students certainly, as Mr. Broccoli indicated, if you have a very strong SAT score, Binghamton really, their mid score is about 1350 to 1400. So if you're in that ballpark range, absolutely submit your SAT scores. But if you're not in that ballpark range for any university that you're applying to, right, then you really want to make sure you have strong grades. So just some things to think about. The reason why we're sharing this information early, especially with eighth and ninth graders, is because what you do today matters tomorrow. So developing good habits early, it really, really matters. All right, Mr. Tregley? The slide above is our graduation requirements for a Tuckahoe High School student. There are two pathways to graduate from Tuckahoe High School. We're going to discuss what courses the students will need to achieve to graduate from Tuckahoe High School. You can graduate with either a Regents Diploma or an Advanced Diploma with designation. All students who attend a New York State High School need to, take, need, to, need to achieve 22 credits to graduate. 
To earn a Regents Diploma, students will need to take the following. Four years of English, four years of history. New York State requires three years of math and three years of science. However, at Tuckahoe High School, we require four years of math, four years of science. Additionally, students will need to take one world language course, four years of physical education, one health course, one art or music course, and any other electives necessary to meet the 22 credits for graduation. To earn an advanced diploma with designation, a student will need to take a total of three language courses. So right now, the only difference for courses is that a student to get an advanced designation takes three language courses, and to get a Regents diploma, they take one language course. Moving on to Regents exam requirements, okay? For every Regents class, you need to take a Regents exam. The Regents exam requirements for a Regents diploma are as follows. Students will need to score a 65 or greater in the five core Regents exams. In science, that could mean biology. In math, algebra one. Global 10, U.S. history in 11th grade, and English in 11th grade. Those four, excuse me, those five core classes a student needs to achieve a 65 or greater to earn a Regents Diploma. To earn a diploma with advanced designation, a student must score a 65 or higher on one additional Regents science exam. For example, that could be chemistry regions. And two additional math exams, geometry and algebra two. Just coming back to what I said earlier, one of the things we're trying to stress to families, in top high schools, they focus less on the advanced regents diploma and focus on getting their five regents and taking AP courses because when colleges look at various students and they want to see who are the more competitive students, they really look at how many AP classes you take, not how many regions classes you take. So you take your five, which are the core requirements, but then you start to add additional advanced placement classes, especially if you're looking to get into some of the top and elite schools. That's what they weigh heavily, right? We just want to share with you to please note, Regents exams count for 10% of the final grade at the end of the year. And we'd like to share with you that Regents exams are no longer uh, included on the Tuckahoe High School transcript. Why? We're aligning ourselves with our, competitive, uh, our competitors, other high schools around. We're doing the same thing as they are. We want to give our students the best advantage possible to get into the college of their choice. We only want to show them in the best light forward. And if their Regents exams are comparable to their grades in the year, you can put the Regents exams on the transcript. But there's also now an option to opt out because we want to show our students in the best light that they can be in their college application process as, long as, the, as well as the other schools who are locally around Tuckahoe High School. These are our course options. There are three options of courses for our students to enroll in. The Regents level courses, the curriculum is aligned with the state standards. Courses prepare students to take the Regents exam and are necessary for graduation. Our honors level, it parallels the curriculum offered in the Regents classes. While covering additional topics a little more in depth with a greater pace, to enroll in the ninth grade honors courses in English and history, a student must have a 90 average in the corresponding middle school subject and be recommended by the student's teacher. Current ninth grade students 
need to maintain an 85 average in their current English and history honors class or achieve a 90 average in their Regents level courses to qualify for honors the following year. Please see the honors policy on our district website for further understanding. And we would be happy to discuss this in our individual meeting more in-depthly next week. AP courses, as Mr. Arthur said, offer a college-level curriculum and are designed to prepare the students for the AP test at the, end of the, at the end of the year. College credits can be earned with strong AP scores, but just as Mr. Arthur has shared with us, it's more, it's more than that. It's developing the skills. It's developing the study skills. It's developing the resourcefulness to keep going when you don't understand the material, to learn how to ask for help, to attend after school help, to learn to dig deeper in the reading. And even if you're not going to score a 95 average, if you score an 85 average, you're still getting things from that. You're learning how to be a critical thinker. You're learning how to dig a little deeper and push yourself. All things that are gonna help you when you get to college and when you get into the real world. You know, one of the unique things about Tucko that's very different from other schools is the fact that there's open enrollment for AP classes. Now, what does that mean? That means that any student who wants to take an AP course can enroll in the class. That is very different from other places where there is a set criteria in order for students to take an AP class. While our honors classes, there's a criteria to get into, not our AP courses. And that's very unique. So we want to make sure that students are really taking advantage of that opportunity. I can tell you, when I first came in here, there were a number of students who requested to drop out of classes. And the school counselors at one point had that authority to drop students from classes just by a parent making a phone call or request. I stopped that, right? That has to go through me. Why? Because the fact is we're really preparing our students for challenges beyond our school, beyond high school. So now it requires the principal approval to drop a student. Because I want to have a conversation with the parents. I want to have a conversation with the student to make sure they're fully informed about the decision that they're making. I have two daughters in college, and I can tell you right now that both of my daughters took at least up to six AP courses. That helped position them to really get into some top schools. And not only that, but to be able to negotiate merit scholarship. So taking courses, these AP courses, can really help you in many ways. So I like to have that conversation with parents so that they're aware of what the options are as far as AP courses are concerned. So this is the reason why I've made sure that students could not just drop any class, including honors courses. And I have to tell you, that has not been an easy situation to deal with. I mean, I've had a parent say, my child is not going to college. But my response is, but you're still expecting your child to get into a competitive field. So we want your child to be able to think critically. We want your child to be able to analyze. We want your child to have good communicative skills. We want to make sure that your child can work well with others, right? And all those skills are needed regardless of your chosen pathway. So that's very important. So just, I, I ask you to really consider that, consider that, share that information, because it's very important for our students to be competitive. So just moving on to the next slide, just in the interest of time, right? We have the typical ninth grade schedule. To give you an idea of what a ninth grade schedule should look like in terms of also electives. So if you get a chance to take a look at that for a minute. As you're looking at that, one of the things that I'm doing right now is working with every one of my core academic departments. So that's science, social study, math, and English. So I can share with you that for next year in science, there's going to be about four different electives that we're going to be offering students. Why? Because we want our students to be competitive. We want our students to be able to have exposure and opportunities like students have in other school districts. So we're just waiting to solidify solidify those courses, but there definitely will be four different science electives for students next year. We're looking at math also. We're looking at our sequence of math. We're looking at the same thing with science. So all our core academic classes, we're really looking at what we're offering and looking to see how we can be more competitive with other schools and also position our students to do well 
as they move on to the next level. So we have one AP course that we offer in the ninth grade this year. And like I said, it was a pilot class. It's the environmental, AP environmental science. We have about eight eighth graders, sorry, eight ninth graders that are in that class and they're doing quite well. See, some of them are here tonight. Those students are gonna be taking an AP exam in the spring. By receiving a three or higher, because the AP exam is graded on a scale of five, receiving a three or higher positions that child or that scholar to be able to earn college credit, as Mr. Treglia indicated. So just some things to think about, okay? Happened again? Yes, it happened again. All right, you wanna just get them? Sure. So moving on, the next slide that you see, and I apologize, we'll bring this back up, is the special education offering. Now, as a former director of special ed, also as a former special ed teacher, you know, there's a continuum of special education services we provide throughout these, uh, 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 the high school. Um, some school districts, depending on what the courses are, or sorry, depending on what the child's needs are, offers additional courses. Our special education courses that we offer, many of our students are taking regions of courses. We also have some students with disabilities taking AP courses. So it all depends on what a child's needs are. In addition, the CSC, Committee on Special Education, really helps to determine what courses a child or what classes or programs we offer here at the high school. So for those who are not familiar with the Committee on Special Education, it's a committee that really looks at a child's needs to determine what a program, whether or not it's resource room or what have you. So we wanted to make sure families are aware for those who have a child with a disability. Moving on to the next slide, right? The next slide shows you a sample transcript. And let me pardon for a minute. You know, some of my colleagues have asked me, why do we need to print, why do we need to print a hard copy? Because you just never know. And experience sort of dictates that. So do you have a copy of the presentation? Okay. So looking at the sample transcript, a transcript becomes essentially what we call your vita. All right, which is more like a resume, but your transcript really helps sell who you are. So your transcript records all of your final courses that you've taken, your regents classes, your elective courses. So it really shows the college all the courses that you have taken. Okay, now in Taco, which is very different from my experience working in other schools, we do not put a child's region score. The first district that I've worked in that we did not do that, right? Now, it's to our children's advantage, depending on how they do. So in any event, so your transcript, as I indicated, would have, is broken down by your years. So your ninth grade year, you'll see all of your transcript. If you are eighth grader taking high school courses, it would list those high school courses. Currently in the eighth grade, we offer living environment, and we offer algebra. Those courses will be also be in your transcript. So if you're a ninth grader who took those two high school courses, they'll be listed. So on in 10th grade, all your courses are listed, okay? So the transcript really provides a pretty good picture of all of the courses that you've taken, core academic as well as your elective courses. Questions so far? Yes. Say one more time. So all regions classes are numerically based. So, and that's across the board. Pretty much all of our core content classes are numerically based. So, so you would see on your child's report card that these core academic classes are numerical. During the pandemic, there were many schools that shifted to a pass-fail option. So now that the pandemic is behind us, they reverted back to the numerical grading system. Do we have a couple of uh, pass-fail classes in electives? But that's for, we use that sometimes for students who are coming, who are new to our school system, who may have not attended school in this country before. So we do make some provision for students who meet that need. All right, we're back up. Oof. All right, let's keep going. Thank you, Mr. Arthur. All right, let's keep it going. Got it. Here's a slide in our testing program overview. In ninth grade in the spring, our students will take the Regents exams and any AP, AP exams in June if they're in an AP class. 
In 10th grade, in the fall, the students have the option of taking the PSAT. In the spring, any Regents exams to finish off their class. In 11th grade, in the fall, the students will take the PSAT here at Tuckahoe. And in the spring, they will register and take the SAT or ACT exam. Any AP exams and any Regents exams in June. In the 12th grade in the fall, the students can then take, again, an ACT, AC, ACT or SAT retake if that's applicable. And then in the spring, AP exams, Regents exams, if that's applicable as well. If I can just jump in for a second. This calendar does not change. This is a great calendar just to hold on to. It does not shift. All right? So just something good to pay attention to. All right? Thank you. Okay. Roadmap to college. What are the colleges looking for? The colleges are looking for your academic performance, your standardized test scores, your personal essay, your activities, and any demonstrated interest you can do. What does that mean? Visiting the campus, following them on social media, connecting virtually with them, sending an email to the college rep, and two teachers of letter of recommendation and one counselor letter of recommendation. The more you outreach to the college, the more they understand that you're interested in their institution and they connect with you, you connect with them, and you share the type of person you are and all the things you're achieving here at Tuckahoe High School. They want to hear from the students. And if I could just add, my son is in the 10th grade now. He's been visiting colleges remotely as well as in person since he was in the third grade. So I say to you, as ninth and as eighth graders and ninth graders, start now. All right? Not to put pressure on, but just to get a flavor of what a college offers. Just there's so many remote visits. One of the things that we're looking to do is increase the number of college trips. That's one of my commitments to um, make sure we can offer that more to our students. And we're also looking at doing some what's called dual enrollment, which is offering additional college courses here. Just yesterday, I have an, an email from Syracuse University and from Manhattanville College where they would like to offer additional college courses here. It's a little bit different from AP courses, so still college courses, but these are courses that, you know, students can still receive college credit, but it's not necessarily an AP course that we're offering. So, and it goes like $50 per credit, so those of you who certainly have children in college now, you know that is a bargain, $50 per credit, so. Thank you. Some college prep tips for the students here. Set a strong academic foundation. Ninth grade grades count. The first thing a college is gonna look at on your transcript are your ninth grade grades, your ninth grade scores, the final grade for the year. Get involved in activities and clubs, athletics early. You wanna start in ninth grade so you can build yourself up to a leadership role in 11th and 12th grade. Build relationship with your teachers. They're gonna be the ones who are writing recommendation letters for you. Research and visit colleges at the fingertip of your phone or, or your laptop of your mouse. You can set up a virtual visit with an admissions rep any day of the week. We mentioned the Naviance program. That's a platform that we're gonna introduce in ninth grade and we use it all through 12th grade. In ninth grade, some of the things that we can talk about are career planning. What is their personality after they take an inventory test to assess their likes, their dislikes, what they're indifferent to? There's also a tool to help, a tool to help their resume building. Naviance is used by our upperclassmen for career and college planning. The college search, the application process, college major exploration. There, are, there is a tool for scholarships and financial aid as well on Naviance. Our next slide is called a scattergram. This is a part of the Naviance program. On this scattergram, which is very important, which makes Tuckahoe a little different, we have 10 years of data that's saved in our Naviance program. 10 years of Tuckahoe High School graduates. And on the scattergram you're looking at right now, it's the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. What you're looking at is the mean GPA the mean SAT, 1160 and a 3.5 UMass Amherst. The green boxes are students who have got accepted at, from Tuckahoe High School. 
When you're home, you have access to the Naviance program from home as well as in school. All you have to do is hover your mouse over the green boxes. They're going to tell you the graduation year, the SAT or ACT score, and the GPA. This is a great way to compare what your grades are, what your SAT or ACT scores are, and to give you a data-driven approach to the college process. The red X's are students who've got denied. So you can get a great idea. Is this a target school for your GPA and SAT scores? Is this a reach school? And you can do that by looking at the graph and seeing where your GPA falls below the mean or above the mean, to the right of the mean or to the left of the mean. We go over this scattergram with all students and families in our individual meeting, and the students use this all the time to research and get accurate data, up-to-date data of Tuckahoe High School applicants and what colleges they've been admitted to and denied. So I'm just imagine what some of you might be thinking. Do I have to know what I'm interested in? No. No. My daughter's in a second year university in Miami. She has no idea what she wants to major in. None. And that's okay. That, that's perfectly fine. But what I would say to you is, is to start thinking about it. Start thinking about applying to college, thinking about college, visiting, looking. You know, I have my son go on to look at several different colleges so he can have an idea of what the acceptance rate is. Have an idea of what type of classes should I be taking if I have disinterest. So this is a time to really start looking at that, including the eighth graders. All right, again, not to put pressure, but again, to just get a little familiar with that process. The earlier you start, it positions you better. Okay. Our next slide will touch on Pathful Explore. Again, this is something that we introduced in the ninth grade meetings. The students can go on Pathful Explore and take in inventories about their likes, their dislikes, their abilities, their values. From those inventories comes a graph, a world of work where you might find your talents placing you years from now. Then there's videos to, to, to look at for the, for the students in the room. Three to five minute videos that gives you a, a, a glimpse of what it's like to go to work. What are you doing at this activity? What are you doing in your job? Does this fit your skills and strengths? This has been a great tool for our students to look into. It's important to get involved. On the screen, we have a total of 33 clubs here at Tuckahoe High School. Colleges want to know, what are you doing after school? How are you getting involved? How are you giving back to your school? Are you going to do this on the college campus? You have an opportunity on the common application to list all of your activities and to describe what you've done in the activities to stand out. It's a great opportunity to start it in ninth grade. Get your feet in the door in any of these 33 clubs we have to offer our activities. Start small, but keep growing within that club where you can become the president or the vice president or the secretary in 11th and 12th grade and share that with the college on your common application or write about it in your personal essay. Tuckahoe High School Athletics. In the fall, we have 14 teams. In the winter, there's 13 offerings for our athletic teams. And in the spring, there's 10 teams. Get involved. Our athletics are, are very popular. There's great school spirit. This is another thing where you want to show the college what you're doing after school and what you're using your time. You don't want to go home and sit home and do nothing. Get involved in sports. Get involved in art or music. Get involved in the theater. Join a club and, and take some leadership role. This is part of the, your well-rounded portfolio that you're going to share with the colleges three to four years down the road. Our next tab is our extra help tab. You can act that, access this on our main web page in Tuckahoe High School. Every student should be seeing their teacher after school at least once a week. Develop a rapport with the teacher. That little extra effort can help your grade go up two or three points. That can make the difference when you're applying to colleges. Again, you want to have a strong foundation in ninth grade. It's never too early to see the teacher for extra help. This schedule shows exactly the days and times that they're available. You know, let me just add to that, and then we're going to start taking questions. You know, I was always amazed as a principal who attends extra help. Always amazed. And it doesn't matter what school I go to, the students who are usually attending extra help are students who usually do quite well, right? 
So I say to you, regardless of how you're doing in school, get to extra help. You know, teachers are required to offer extra help to students weekly. So take advantage of it. You know, it's so important. So not all schools offer that. But here it's required for all teachers to make themselves available, middle school or high school, make themselves available for extra help. So take advantage of it. And you know, I tell my son all the time, let's not wait until you start struggling. You know, get to extra help now, and that may make a difference from a B to an A, or from an A to an A+. Plus. So take full advantage of it. So I want to thank Mr. Treglia. Um, it may look quick and easy, but uh, many hours went into revising um, our presentation, trying to make it something um, <laughs> meaningful. So thank you. We'll stand here and take as many questions, all right? Yes. Sure. Let's just say with first one for a second. Let me just repeat it. The question is, when is Naviance introduced to students, and how are they trained so they know how to use that program or software? The students are introduced to it in the ninth grade parent meeting next week, starting November 13th. Yes. And that'll be the first introduction, and we'll be sharing the username, ID, and password, how to sign up on Naviance, how to access it. We'll be going over the first steps and explaining what the program can do. Obviously, there needs to be more than just, just that in the first meeting because, you know, kids can forget. It goes, it goes past them. So we have to keep working with them, and we'll be outreaching to them. And the students can come to our office at any time if they want to look at the Naviance program, ask any questions, or they, sometimes they forget their user ID and they come in and try to ask us to reset it. So students are coming all the time to asking about the Naviance program, even our 12th graders. So the second question is, for those students who are either reluctant or don't make it their business to go see the school council for Naviance, or even let's say our parent meetings for ninth graders. So one of the things that we implemented this year is an accountability protocol. So I can tell you right now, 72 students in our senior class, 47 of them actually had their, um, have already applied to colleges, right? And we know who those other students have not, and we're pulling them in. Right? We can tell you right now, every student who's attended College Cafe, right? Because this is an accountability, because I need to make sure that the school counselors are following up with all the students, whether or not they are proactive, take initiative, or if they don't, because every single student matters. So to your point, that is a concerted effort that, and a standard that I've set for guidance. So the question is, how are we um, preparing students to learn how to study, study in, in different methods? So it's one of the things that we are looking at, um, more of a building wide. Um, the different schools have different ways that go about that. Right now, we know that teachers work with students, whether or not it's in the classroom or after school with the extra support or what have you. So I am looking at some system-wide approach to go about dealing with that, you know, whether or not it's adopting the Cornell Noth method, so students use that approach and it's building wide. So it's a process, you know, where we're looking at what we do well and what do we need to do better. Uh, we're also considering looking at an advisory uh, for, for our high school, but certainly there are a number of things that we would like to do, and of course we have a 2% cap, so we have to look at what our priorities are to really make that decision. So looking at a building-wide approach, 
Right now, I can tell you we have three building-wide initiatives. Right now, we had launched something called the 13 Academic Words, which are 13 high-command words that all students should know. So words such as like analyze, what does that mean? How does it get applied to science, social studies, math? What does it look like? Am I able to use that word myself? Right, so that's a building-wide initiative that we've launched in November. Bell to bell instruction, that's an expectation. You know, a student should not, or students should not stand and wait for the bell to ring two minutes. You multiply that times 180 days, that's over nine hours of instruction students are missing. Right, so that's some of our building-wide initiative and looking at um, uh, student engagement, which is one of our building-wide initiative. What does it mean to have students be intellectually challenged? What does that look like in the classroom, right? In every classroom. So those are some of the initiatives that we've been implementing, and it's a process, um, and that's what we're focusing on, all right? Yes. Sure. So the question is, what is the format or process um, for extra help? If a child is not sure, you know, what questions to ask, how, what does a child do? Or how, what can advice can we give? So certainly something I'm going to look at of my staff, extra help happens organically, where my expectation is that, you know, a teacher knows their, their scholar, right? Um, they get evaluated on their knowledge of students. How well do you know a student? You know, your knowledge of your student should help dictate how you plan, questions that you ask, how you scaffold material, right? How do you position students? How do you group students? What kind of questions you ask them? So that's my expectation, and like I said, that all comes under the umbrella of student engagement. To your specific point, students can go to extra help with questions or without questions. My expectation is that the teacher, being knowledgeable of the student, in terms of how well they do in the class, how well they grasp the material, if they're having some struggles. That's an expectation that teachers should know, right? So if your child is going to extra help and not finding it helpful, I would have a conversation with the teacher directly because extra help is designed so that when the child leaves, they're in a better position than they, when they leave from when they enter the class. And Mr. Arthur, I would say as a school counselor, right, we encourage the partnership with the families I would love to hear from the family, my son or daughter is going to extra help, it's not working, it's biology, what can you do to help? And that's our job, to partner with the student and the family to walk the student to extra help, or to email with the teacher and say, hey, the student's struggling, what could I do, what could I do to talk with them, how can I generate two questions that they come into extra help and ask that they feel comfortable communicating with, instead of going into extra help and there's five or 10 other children there and they feel nervous talking and, and talking about what they don't know. So that's our job as school counselors to work in that partnership with the families and the students to advocate for them within the building. So, yes, yes it does. The question is, does it apply to middle school too? Mr. Trekler raised a very interesting point. My son is a very quiet young man, somewhat introverted, doesn't really communicate too much. So to Mr. Trekler's point, if your child is not someone who would initiate a conversation, reach out to the school counselor also, right? I'm not telling you something you don't know. Every adult has different personalities, all right? So I know looking at my child's teachers that some of them um, are very welcoming, right? And some of them may not always present that way, even though they are. So for my son, it may be a little bit more intimidating, uncomfortable, right? We're here to support. One of the things that stands out about our environment is our sense of caring. All right, it is. Um, certainly the staff here, I'm getting to know, right? But my expectation is clear. Build strong relationship with students and do what we need to do to maintain those. Because if you have a good relationship with student, that student will come to you and discuss almost anything, right? So that's my expectation, is an ongoing expectation, right? Whether or not it's this year, next year, it will not change. Build relationships with students before you ask them to learn, all right? I saw a couple of hands go up. Yes. The 
The question is, is there a cap to the number of students that can be enrolled in an AP class? Well, I respond by saying that in our teacher's contract, there's a cap of how many students can be in their classroom, no matter if it's AP, Regents, or uh, an elective course. All right? Yes? That's an excellent question. So let me repeat the question. The question is, is it better for a child through the lens of a college rep to take an AP class and say, do okay or struggle a little bit, as opposed to take a Regents class and do well? So it's an interesting question situation because I found myself in that same situation with one of my daughters. So what I understand from the college reps, and I work with them quite a bit, Mr. Tregler jumping at any point. Seeing a child struggle is not a good situation. So if a child takes a Regents class and they're achieving a B and A as opposed to taking an AP course and getting a, a D, right, doing better in a Regents class always stands better in the college rep's eyes. All right? Yes. Yes, they are. Yes. So Regents classes are weighted at one level than honors classes and AP classes are weighted higher because they're college level courses. So to, to further that question, so when we calculate a child's average, all right, so when you talk about the valedictorian, salutatorian, when students take courses that have a higher weighting, it impacts their GPA um, in an affirm, in a positive light. All right, so in other words, if a child is taking all AP classes by the time they're, they start from their freshman year and move on to take on AP classes, and someone does not take AP classes but still do well, that if their grade point, at, sorry, if they're, they perform equally as well, regions versus AP, the student taking the AP class, their grade point average would be higher because it's weighted higher, yes. That's a great question. So the question is, if a child is in an AP class and they are struggling, should they stay in the class or should they drop out of the course? So I'm going to respond in a couple of ways. If you're a college student, are you able to drop a class? Yes, you are. The difference is you're paying for that class and you have to consider or contemplate that. Taking an AP class, what I do with the teachers and school counselors, I meet weekly with the school counselors to get a sense of how students are doing in their courses. They're usually indicators from market period one, market period two, that will give some idea that the student may be in over their head. So we review those students weekly and have conversations. Bring parents in, bring the student in, look at extra help, right, and have those conversations. So by the time a child gets a second market period, it's pretty clear if a child should be in that AP class or not. And those are conversations we would have had previously. Yes. So the question is, and I'll let you respond to it, if my child is coming in as a ninth grader, would my child have that same school counselor all four years, or would the school counselor change? Great question. Um, one of the special parts about Takahoe is our intimacy. The students that have a certain counselor in ninth grade will go all four years with that counselor. The benefit of that is building the relationship, slowly but surely building the trust, meeting the family, understanding that student's needs, aspirations, strengths. It makes it much easier to communicate with the teachers, family, write a college recommendation letter for them. Uh, current ninth grade students, Ms. Perlow has A through J, and I have K through Z. For eighth graders, you'll find out your guidance counselor in the freshman orientation after uh, it, when we come back in August, September. 
That's a great question. There are pros and cons to both. Um, for me, as having served as a principal in two other school districts, I would say to you, having a school council that loops with your child, to me, has always been a much better scenario. That's been my experience. And he, Mr. Tregler, just gave some of those reasons. Yes, sir. as the students who play sports would say, good eye, sir. So good observation. So the question is, a child takes an AP course in the ninth grade, is there an opportunity for them to take an AP class in the 10th grade? That's some of what we're looking at exploring. I could say right now in science, yes, right? And it is my expectation it'll be more than just science. So we're looking, I'm meeting with each of the departments looking at that course sequence. So, so far I've met with the science department, so I can say to you that yes. Now, let me further explain this. Some AP, the reason why you see so many AP courses offered in 11th and the 12th grade is because for some AP courses, let's just say in science, there's a direct correlation to math. So you wanna make sure that a scholar has taken um, certain math courses in order to do well in an AP science class. But that's sort of the correlation. So I am looking at meeting with all the departments. We're also considering offering additional AP courses, right? Uh, we added additional one this year. So like I said, it is something that we are definitely looking at. Um, and like I said earlier, we're definitely looking at order, assuming offering four additional science elective courses next year. Other questions? Yes. So New York State has a certain requirement, and schools can't do less, but they can do more. So the question is, if I heard you correctly, um, the graduation requirements. So New York State requires three years of math, but we request or require four. And let me explain to you, if I... Uh, this is the New York State chart. Yeah, so what we're presenting to you is what New York State requires for graduation. So we require four years of math, and I'm explaining to you why. Colleges want to see it, number one, right? Number two, we also want to position our scholars to continually challenge themselves because we want colleges to be able to see that. I can also say to you whether or not your child is taking AP courses or Regents courses or if your child is on a pathway where they're going to um, receive what's called a local diploma, and that's usually preserved for students with an IEP who may not achieve a 65 on all regions. The reason why we insist on students taking four years is because some of our students may elect to go to one of our local community college or go to a school and they have to take an entrance exam. And that entrance exam, if you don't do well, then you're required to take a remedial course. That remedial course you still have to pay for, but you do not earn any college credit. So we want to make sure our scholars, when they leave here, that they are positioned to do well, no matter what their pathway is. Yes. So, uh, science is four years at THS, as well as math is four years. That's the only difference. And at one point, and Mr. Arthur and I talk about this, we, we don't want the students in study hall in 12th grade. We want them in the classroom with their, with their classmates, learning, keeping busy, being inspired. Um, that's one of the benefits of taking four years of science and a math. Any additional question on that? And I can say to you, we're not the only high school. I can show you, check any competitive high school, they usually require four years of math, four years of science, 
Um, and certainly New York State requires four years of English. Other questions? So those are conversations that start really from the ninth grade. So, so the ninth grade conferences with the school counselor, what they do is they look at your four years, right? What are your interests? Any idea what you want to pursue? So it's a conversation, and based on the conversation, you start to de develop a four-year plan. To prepare them for what? So if sure, sure. So if I heard the question correctly, when is the best time to have a conversation about AP courses with the school counselor? And what I would say to you that it's part of that ninth grade conversation. So the ninth graders are starting this month one-on-one -on -one session with their family, with the school counselor, and they look at four years, which including talking about uh, AP courses, honor courses, so that's when that conversation takes place. In terms of preparation for the AP exams, well, part of learning the content and, and having conversations with the teacher, the teachers are working with the students to prepare for the AP exams. No, starts in September. We would, you know, I think the question is, um, your son's in eighth grade, right? So it's never too early to start outreaching to your, to your son's counselor and to start that conversation. You're even welcome to talk to the middle school counselor, or if you want a high school perspective, we all work together, you're welcome to contact me or Mrs. Perillo, and we're happy to have that conversation with you. So now I understand the question. Yes. The question is, if I'm a parent, well, you added some detail, parent of an eighth grader. So if I'm a parent of an eighth grader, and I want my child to take AP class or AAP class in the ninth grade, when should I have that conversation, correct? Yeah. So what I would say to you is start reaching out to your child's counselor in the spring because we don't make that determination for AP in the ninth grade until the latter part of the spring, right? So this year, our one ninth grade AP course, there was a criteria because it was a pilot. Next year, it's gonna be open enrollment. So what the school counselors do, they work with your child and your child complete what's called a course request. So these are courses that your child would wanna take. It's a conversation with the school counselor, right? Based on your child's, the conversation, that leads to your child being enrolled in certain classes. So that takes place this spring. So reach out to your child's school counselor, right? I would do that like around February, which would be a good time, all right? Uh, yes. Huh. It's a question I Good don't know question. the answer to. Traditionally, um, we introduce it in the ninth grade. Of course, if an eighth grade student or family is interested in the Naviance program, we can definitely set up an individual meeting and share the Naviance tools with the family and student. It's never too early. So I can say to you that in some schools, they do look at programs like Naviance in the middle school. It is something that I'm looking into also. Um, so we can start tapping students' interests a lot earlier and not waiting just to high school. So, but I didn't know the answer to that question, so thank you, Mr. Treglia. Any other question? Yes. Yeah, AP Environmental Science. So it's one of the ninth grade courses. And I, again, I just, every school district is a little bit different. I, I can share with you in my son's school, it's a little bit different. You have some ninth graders that are coming in who already took you know, Algebra two pre-calculus. So therefore, they may have a little bit more AP offerings. 
especially in science, because of the math has already been, you know, they've taken certain levels of math. Not all public schools have that kind of trajectory, right? So what I would say to you is we offer AP Environmental Science because the, there isn't a requirement to have the mastery of Algebra II or pre-calculus or what have you, right? So we're looking at additional courses that we can possibly consider offering in the ninth and the tenth grade for AP-wise for next year. Again, that sometimes involves staffing, right? So there's just some things that we're looking at so we can position our students to have the best options. Yes. Sure, if you email me, I will send that to you. But what I will also do, I will add it to this presentation. It was supposed to be added where we had all the AP courses. So we revise this and we will send this out to all eighth and ninth grade families. Just make a note okay. of that, please. Okay. All right, so we already have that information. Uh, those ninth grade parents who are here, if you remember, it was part of the ninth grade orientation where we listed all of our AP courses. So we'll add this to this PowerPoint and we'll um, send it out. Uh, next week to everyone. Great question. Yes. That's a great question. Sure. You want to speak to it? Sure. Um, if an AP class is not offered at Tuckahoe, how does a student get access to that course? Um, you know, at Tuckahoe, we do have students who are taking AP classes online. For example, Advanced Placement, BC Math. Uh, advanced placement uh, physics. Um, we have many students, we have one student who just registered with advanced placement literature and composition. So our school is open and flexible for all students to have choice. And if we don't offer a class, we're finding a way to offer that to a student in a different, a different way. They're still supported by the counselor. They still can come to the teacher for extra help or the principal. And we're all working together. There is an approval. Yes, I was just, let No. The no, the that's, yeah. So let me, yes. let me respond to that. So um, there's a course, but not a course to the family. All right, the district actually covers that course. So there's an approval process. So the question is, what if a child wants to take an AP course that we don't currently offer with a teacher in our building? So depending on that course, we have a um, online program that is used where students can enroll in certain AP courses. It is a process. Um, it requires my approval as well as approval of Dr. Keel. And um, there's no cost to the family, but the district covers the course. And we have a few students yes. who are enrolled in such courses, different AP courses now that we don't currently offer in the building. Yes. So, so what we're hearing is that, that, that your son is taking Italian and you would like him to take AP Spanish. Okay. Well, that, yeah. So we have, let me give you a different scenario. We've had students who parents independently want them to learn a separate language or their native language and then want them to take the AP exams. Um, that's a conversation that we do have with central administration because you know, we have to order those exams. Um, you know, so it's a process. So if you have an interest in your child taking an AP class that's not currently offered, please reach out to the school counselor so that we can have a conversation to see if we can make it available. Or in some cases, your child may need to take it in another public school. So it all depends on what the exam is. Other questions? Yes. Yeah. 
So the question is that, do we have a relationship with Concordia or a university or a college where if there's a class that a child wants to take that we do not offer, that they can take the class there? Um, most high schools have some sort of arrangement with a local uh, college. Um, what it usually looks like now is something that's called dual enrollment. And um, the school, the high school, would work with that university to get a teacher on staff trained, and then the courses offer at the high school so that students can enroll and also receive college credit. Um, if you email me, I would look into that a little bit more closely. I know more schools have moved away from sending students out and going more in the direction of dual enrollment. Other questions? Yes. Sorry, I didn't hear the question. In terms of what? There's an ACT test coming up this week. We know that. Um, um, so you talk about more like sporting events. I know we had the winter open enrollment um, to register through family ID. We've sent out information on that. Um, I could speak to that. Uh, the question is, is there any support for prospective student athletes to help them through the process? Good question. Um, myself and Ms. Perillo, we're happy to help any prospective student athletes with the NCA Clearinghouse, with communicating with a college and how to communicate with a college coach, with making a highlight tape if that's something they want to do for their sport, and how to putting the whole package together, still keeping in mind what's the best academic option for them and how can they use sport to maybe be that ace in the hole and help them gain entry to a college if a college coach is interested. Um, Let me just add to what you're saying. So Mr. Tregler brought up something that's very important and sometimes something that sometimes our scholar athletes or parents may not consider. Your child has to take courses that are cleared by the clearinghouse. You want to explain that a little bit more detail? Because I think sure. it's very important for parents to understand. So in other words, a child does not want to take a regents class, right? Um, or don't want to take an AP class. I want to take a class um, that may not be cleared by the, by the clearinghouse, right? That will compromise their opportunity to get a college scholarship. So these are conversations that we have with students in our one-on-one -on -one session with their families so they can understand you have to take the right courses in order to achieve a certain status. You want to talk about that there, a little bit more? There's, there's Division One, Division Two, and Division Three. In Division One and Division Two, the NCA Clearinghouse has a jurisdiction where every high school has to have their classes uh, submitted and registered with the NCAA, and the NCAA shares with us what classes are are accepted. Um, we have a list of every Tuckahoe High School class if they're accepted by the NCAA or not. I would say 95% to 99% of our classes are accepted by the NCAA. Um, Division three does not use the NCAA Clearinghouse. Um, you could take whatever classes you want and still play Division three athletics. Um, but really by graduating from Tuckahoe High School with all of our offerings, you're going to be uh, cleared and certified to play Division I or Division II if that's where your talents uh, present itself. So, it doesn't look like there's any further questions. It's almost 8 o'clock, so we'll end it here. Unless there's a burning question anyone has to ask, or you can email us, and we will get back to you. So I want to thank you all for coming out, and thank you for the questions. Thank you very much. <laughs>